Hey, what's going on to the loyal subscribers here at the Impact Lounge? I am your boy, BQ. I wanted to drop this little audio on you guys, and I think it's important that I, I touch on this every once in a while because I get a lot of new traffic, new subscribers every day, and I think it's kind of important I talk about my background a little bit and why I, why I do this, why I cover Impact Wrestling the way that I do. What is the mission? What is the goal? You know, I, th I think it's good that I talk about that stuff every once in a while. The first thing I want to put out there, you may listen to some other channels um, that cover Impact. Most of these people consider themselves podcasters. I do consider myself a podcaster, but I consider myself a YouTuber. I consider myself a marketer. As I've said on my podcast many times, um, I'm a business major. I'm going to have my degree here in a, at the end of March. Uh, I have a certificate in digital marketing, not in digital marketing, um, in marketing. And I have a, a certificate in graphic design. And digital marketing is very much a passion of mine as well. And it is the field that I'm ultimately trying to get into. So when I do this YouTube channel, as much as I, and I'm just trying to shoot straight with you guys, as much as I truly am trying to provide an outlet for Impact Wrestling fans, this is also my personal project. It's my resume as well, because this is a field, whether it's digital marketing, traditional marketing, um, social media, social media management, whatever it is, whatever the field I eventually get into, this is, this channel kind of serves as my resume a little bit, if you guys understand that. So, with that being said, this channel is part of my monthly income. I'm, I'm shooting straight with you guys. So as much as the mission is to provide something for the Impact Wrestling fans, I also have to get something out of it too because I do spend a lot of time doing this. And it is in my spare time for the most part because I am a full-time parent. I am a full-time student. I work full-time. Um... And as I've mentioned before, I play fantasy, uh, fantasy basketball for money. So that uh, that obviously is like part of my most of my day. You know what I mean? So I do do this channel in my spare time, but um, it's important that there's some gain for me too as well. And that's just me trying to be honest with you guys. A lot of the content on this channel, the first mission ever was the podcast to cover Impact Wrestling, and I'm gonna get into why I cover it, why I chose Impact Wrestling over everything else. That was obviously the first mission. But this channel has turned into a bit of a new site. Some people accuse me of being a dirt sheet um, or having a different mission or different intentions at the end of the day covering impact. And that's why I'm trying to shoot straight with you guys. What I do is marketing. I, some people look at it as, as some you know clickbait or... You know, and these are people that know absolutely nothing about digital marketing. My mission is not um, ill, Ill. I have no ill intentions whatsoever, not trying to get one over on anybody. But yeah, I do talk about a lot about the news that comes out in the impact wrestling world because do you want to hear it from me, someone who 100% supports this company, or do you want to hear it from Dave Melter? Do you want to hear it from uh, Ryan Satin? You feel me? So whether it's good news or bad news, I'm going to talk about it on the channel. My motivation for content is not only to help wrestling fans, but I have personal motivation as well. Because as, as I try to explain, this is my resume to eventually get into the, the marketing world um, as a full-time gig. Why do I cover Impact Wrestling? So years ago, I used to watch just about everything, every promotion that was on. And to be totally honest with you, I was a WWE guy. I grew up off it as a kid, you know, um, and I'm 38 years old, so I grew up off, you know, the 80s stuff, the really, really cool stuff, in my opinion. Um, so, I, so I was always kind of a WWE guy, but I, I, I watched everything. So uh, towards the end, like, I shouldn't say towards the end, but for the most part, like in, in my active duty military career, like work was my priority. And then when I was off, I was, you know, doing the, uh, the hip hop thing. And I was, and that kind of took most of my spare time. 
so my my life was work and music wrestling was kind of like and then i'm a huge basketball fan all right wrestling was like third or fourth in all of this but i would dvr everything and i can tell you until i started covering impact wrestling as a youtuber i never looked at a single spoiler i was ignorant enough to not even know that spoilers existed because i didn't google wrestling i wasn't and i wasn't very heavy on twitter like facebook was all i had so if i was watching impact or if i was watching like nxt on the network uh smackdown whatever it is it was all it was all like live to me i didn't i never knew what was going to happen so 2000 15, I think it was a year they were on Destination America. I didn't have that channel, and I, I frankly didn't watch them because I didn't really read wrestling news and, you know, spoiler stuff. I didn't know what was going on. So that's a period, the Destination America period. I have no idea what the hell went on. Um, I watched Slammiversary on YouTube. That was the one where I, Jeff Jarrett won in the main event, King of the Mountain match. <laughs> um... So that was, that was, I watched that on YouTube like days after it came out. Bound for Glory that year, I wasn't even like necessarily checking for it. Like I, you know, it was like October 4th, I believe that year. And, you know, that time of the year rolled around because I was really wasn't following the product. Didn't know it was on. And I was listening to Jim Ross's podcast. He interviewed EC3. And I'm like, damn, yeah, Bound for Glory's on. And I ordered it. And I loved it. It was the main event of Drew Galloway versus EC3, and then they threw Matt Hardy in at the last minute, and Jeff Jarrett was a ref, you know, Jeff Jarrett, Jeff Hardy was a guest referee, and there was also Kurt Angle versus Eric Young, Lashley versus Bobby Roode, the Wolves versus Trevor Lee, and that jobber from SmackDown. So, watch this pay per view, ordered it, ordered it as a traditional pay per view, and and granted, you know, like I said, I hadn't watched Impact in a while. Uh, loved it. Absolutely loved it. And the point of me saying that I never read spoilers and I never did this and this was because I, honest to God, was ignorant to the talk of TNA. Like the way where people are, oh, you know, Dixie this and Jeff this and, um, you know, all the things that they complained about with TNA. I honestly didn't know what the inter internet chatter was. I was completely out of the loop in the internet world. I just watched the programs. So, you know, watch Bound for Glory, really, really enjoyed it. And went online to, this is, you know, the one time I was like, eh, I'm going to check out some reviews online. And the reviews absolutely killed this. Like, it was the worst thing to ever grace pay per view. And this was a time where, again, you know, I, I, I kind of watched everything, I put everything on a level playing field. And that Bound for Glory, I was like, this was better than any of the, the WWE pay per views I watched this year. I mean, I, I really truthfully felt that. I wasn't a TNA guy. I wasn't, you know, I was just a wrestling guy. And I was like, man, th this was better than anything I watched. I don't know where this hate is coming from. Completely blind to it. So they debut on Pop. And I was really excited about that because I could start watching it again. And as the debut was coming and the, the debut came and went, and I, I kind of started getting a little bit more involved with online. I started realizing, wow, people are really trashing this company for almost almost no reason. There, and then you know, of course, I've learned of all the mistakes they've made and everything, you know, over the last couple of years. And um, I mean, over the last couple of years, I've followed more of the history, I guess I should say. But as someone who was like calling it right down the middle, I was like, this is bullshit, absolute bullshit, and. Um, I started really gravitating towards Impact. I've always been a real underdog fan. So I'm an, I'm originally from California. And I know some people get confused because I talk about I live in Illinois and then I used to live in Florida. I, I'm from California. So my favorite team is the Los Angeles Clippers. I grew up with the Clippers, you know, up until a few years ago. They had gone, they had 30 losing seasons in 33 years. Like, this was the worst team in sports. And we, of course, had the Lakers across the street, one of the most successful teams in sports. 
And I often compare my fandom right now of Impact to my fandom of, you know, growing up a Clipper fan with like the WWE being the Lakers, you know. So I, I feel people's pain when someone leaves Impact and goes to WWE, you know, that's, it's kind of like if, as a Clipper fan, if Blake Griffin were to leave in free agency for the Lakers, you know, it would like devastate me. So I kind of tied the two together like that. And um, one thing I want to say is that even with all those losing seasons, nobody talks about those losing seasons now when you're talking about the Clippers. The only people who talk about that are Laker fans. Other than that, like, they're the Clippers who are a pretty decent team now. So that's one of the reasons I'm very optimistic with the new management coming in is that I really think that in a year, two years from now, except for, like, the hardcore WWE fans, um, I really think people are going to forget a lot about the past I think it can be done because to see it done in basketball with the clips and, and basketball is a lot bigger than pro wrestling is it makes me really optimistic that impact can get there but it does take time it takes good management good decisions it takes when people leave the company saying good things you know there's a lot of a lot of really little things but anyway I ultimately decided to cover impact because as I was watching the first few episodes on Pop, I was listening to reviews and there was very few out there. And sometimes there were some that, you know, would come in hot, new podcasts, start for a few episodes and then die. So I said to myself, you know, I kind of been wanting to do a podcast. I was doing a podcast for, you know, my music and things like that at one point. But hip hop is a very oversaturated genre and it's a genre that kind of sucks now. So uh, that's a lot of the reason I kind of retire from doing that. And I know when people hear me speak in my podcast, I'm, I try to be very, you know, clear in my speech. And you're like, there's no way this dude raps. But I did for a long time. Consider myself very good at it. Um, so I decided I wanted to cover Impact Wrestling. And knowing what I knew, I learned a lot of my marketing skills through through music. Because obviously you got to build a fan base and everything. So I knew how to build a Twitter how to build up a YouTube channel, all that good stuff, all right? Um, so I decided to cover Impact. I didn't think it was going to really become what it was. I thought maybe it might have, a, a you know, 100 listeners here and there. Initially, it was the King of the Mountain podcast. I had Will and Kyle. Back then, it was a little more, little more of a comedy show. Um, I used, you know, some sound clips. Kyle's a funny guy. Will was a funny guy. And uh, I didn't. I it, it got to the point I didn't really like the direction of it. I felt like it was getting a little negative. And um, it, <laughs> sometimes on Twitter, people would put me in like conversations or whatever, and forget I was in there. And I would read people kind of talking shit. And it wasn't always directed at me, but it was just kind of saying how negative the podcast started getting. So I kind of rebranded it, and you know now we have Ro, we have Adam. And it's a little more analytical, a little more like sports talk radio. And I think it's more positive because the thing is, I can sit there and be like, man, this was the worst angle in the world, or I hate this wrestler or whatever. But someone I'm listening to, I mean, someone listening to me does like that wrestler or does like that angle. So that's that's why I try to review the show in a very objective manner and not... Um, not not force my opinion too much you know what I mean and I think that's the same with my guest host we don't want to force our opinions on people because some people are going to like things some people are going to dislike things if I feel very strongly about something because I feel like I'm educated enough to have an opinion a, a better opinion on it than most people then then I might like hammer it home a little bit but so you know this started as a podcast and it really grew into the channel and now, you know, I make it a point to try to upload content every day. And, I mean, it really is my goal to be, like, the number one person covering this, you know. And I've gotten a lot of respect from, um, you know, some, some you know, minor connections within the company or people who r might run independent companies close to me or whatever. Like, you know, I'm starting to build really good, really strong relationships with people. And, you know, kind of establishing myself as, as a pretty pretty big player in this podcast world in my opinion but 
I really started to fall in love with TNA and Impact as I started doing this podcast. And I, I actually completely stopped watching everything else. I complete, completely stopped watching WWE. And because I think when I started covering TNA, I started realizing I didn't like the way a lot of the WWE fans acted towards TNA. And because I'm a guy who, you know, I brought up the Clippers. I've always been a, you know, a, um, more of an underdog guy. It, it actually pushed me and I started gravitating towards like really becoming an Impact fan. And now, you know, now I watch, like, you know, I'll watch Shine, Lucha Underground, some indie shows and everything, you know. But as far as like the televised product... Impact is what I watch, and, you know, frankly with, you know, like I said, I'm a pretty busy guy. I don't got time to watch anything else, and nothing has, has grabbed my attention. And I've, But I always, you know, for the most part, know the wrestlers in Ring of Honor in WWE, but now I'm to the point, you know, people, someone the other day was, oh, yeah, uh, Sonya Deville got... Sonya Deville got new gloves. I'm like, who the, who the hell is that? And I'm probably offending someone who, like, who follows that product closely. How do you not know who that is? But now to the point they're like bringing up names. I'm like, I have no idea who you're talking about. So I've really started becoming, you know, all about the Impact Wrestling product. And I really felt like the fans deserve someone who who wasn't going to trash it. And, you know, someone hit me on Twitter not too long ago. It was like, you you know, you only talk about Impact. You should be talking about everything. You should be talking about CZW. You know, they deserve someone to talk about them too. Yeah, they do, but it's not me. (laughs) <laughs> this is my niche and this is the niche that I'm going to stay in. And where a lot of podcasters and YouTubers in a wrestling world go wrong is they try to cover everything. And most people don't want to hear everything. They want to hear about the product that they watch and the one that they follow. So I become a, a 100% impact guy. And it was never because I was a TNA fanboy. If anything, I was kind of a WWE guy, because there was times in TNA I, di- I didn't like it. I didn't like the Hogan stuff. And there was some stuff in the early years that I didn't I didn't care for. And looking back at it, it was better than I remembered. I always thought to myself, like, TNA's kind of too serious, you know? But I was also kind of younger at the time, and you know, maybe in my uh, early to mid-20s, maybe a little more immature, and kind of gravitated to some of the childish stuff I might have seen on WWE if that makes any sense to you but looking back at I'm kind of like yeah that that stuff actually was much better than I I remember it but I was kind of a WWE guy and now I've really like fallen in love with the impact and the TNA product and this is just this is just my life like (laughs) it's not my life but I mean I really am trying to do something really positive for the company and do right by the company and do something really positive for the fans and there's times that I dude I don't even I do not want to do this anymore like I am done sometimes like sometimes I'm like man I've got so much going on with school and this and this like screw this channel but now I'm to the point a lot of people really want I mean I've become an outlet for a lot of people to hear about impact and there's a lot of great people covering impact like Andre Corbeil uh the heel cast um Robert does wrestling the uh, impact attack with um, Big Ray and everything. There's a lot of really good people covering this stuff. People that I've I've kind of considered to be my friends now. But I, it, it would be it would be incorrect for me to say I'm not trying to be the number one person doing this at the same time. And it can be very frustrating. You know, I deal with trolls, and I have listeners who have turned to haters, which is kind of crazy. And a lot of the listeners didn't like the direction that the channel went from where covering impact to all of a sudden talking about the news and, and things like that. Like, screw yourself because this is my life, <laughs> my channel. And as I said, this this is my resume to, to um, really feed my family one day in the marketing world. All right. So that's why I do what I do. That's, you know... Um, as a for a personal gain that's why i strive to hit those numbers and to constantly grow the channel because i'm not going to sit here and just talk to 100 people every every day like i did when i started the channel you know now i want to grow this thing some people may not like the methods i i I do so but my intention is always very pure for impact and for the fans of impact and it always will be 
Um, I love this product, and I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna be here until they shut the doors. I'm gonna keep <laughs> I'm gonna keep doing this. I'm gonna do my absolute best to. And uh, maybe in the future, when my schedule is not as, or I mean, if it, I mean, if it becomes more hectic, then you know, maybe I'll have to cut back a little bit. You're not going to hear me on the review for a few weeks. I will be honest; I kind of got something personal going on, and obviously, I have time to upload to the channel otherwise. But that's because it's on my own schedule. But as far as reviewing the impact product every week right now, um, and to to meet up with the other two guys on their schedules and with what I got going on personally, it's not possible. So they're holding the fort down a little bit for me right now. And I'm truly grateful. And I want to say in closing, if you're still listening, I am truly grateful to everybody listening to this, that listens to the podcast, listens to the channel that says good things. Cause when I have haters on Twitter, a lot of you guys step up and sometimes it's people I've never even spoke to a single time. And they've really like stood up for me and and they know that I have no ill intentions. And even when I, I do cover the news or appear to be trying to uh, drive traffic to the channel, they know they know what my intentions are at the end of the day. And it's to do good things for Impact and, and the fans. So thanks for listening. This has been about almost two, 22 minutes of me babbling. But um, I appreciate you hanging around. And I'll talk to you soon. Peace.